What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive, like so many people are starting to do right now, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, maybe you found this because maybe you just tested positive and you're trying to find what's going on. Why am I testing positive for COVID? I thought COVID was over with. Yeah, it's catching a lot of people off guard right now at a really fast rate. Well, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and all these other viruses that keep popping up. There's a lot of them each day. Seems like I'm reading about a virus that I have never heard of before. And then, of course, there's climate change as well. Climate change can have an impact on our health as well. Our main focus here is, though, the COVID pandemic during the daily pandemic updates. Want to learn more? Want to stay informed with what's going on? Just subscribe down below. I do one of these just about every day. I give this a thumbs up if you like it. The more times people hit that thumbs up button, of course, the more YouTube will push out this content. They'll also push this content out more if you hit that notification bell and get notified when I do my daily updates. And, of course, leave a comment and share this with anyone you know. All right, we do have some news stories to talk about today. Then we're going to look at some daily stuff, and we have to put a little more emphasis on wastewater once again today. I know we've been hidden heavy with wastewater, and that's because there's an alarming trend ongoing in wastewater. It started off with just one site in San Francisco, then Hawaii started going up, and it just continues to pop up in more places, and well, maybe the national trend now is starting to change as well. You'll want to stay tuned. About halfway to the second half of the video, we are going to be talking about wastewater, and you're going to see something that is not good whatsoever for the United States. So let's get right into it, shall we? Irish Health Chief sounds alarm amid spike in COVID cases and hospitalizations. What's that rise, might you ask? Well, as of May 25th, they saw a 20% increase in cases. 306 cases were reported. That's likely a huge undercount because they had 154 cases in the hospital. So, yeah, 306 cases reported, 150. The foreign hospital, yeah, their cases are likely much higher. So Ireland now joining the party of rising cases for COVID. Taking a look at this, pertussis, whooping cough. Seven more cases have been confirmed in Kentucky in Fayette County, and the total is now at 21 for Kentucky. Moving on to this now, long COVID. I have to remind you about long COVID. There's one easy way to prevent yourself from getting long COVID. You wear an N95 mask, N95 or better. You don't test positive. You avoid catching COVID altogether. In other words, you don't get it. And guess what happens if you don't get COVID? You don't get long COVID. Now, there are different uh, circumstances where you might get sick, you take a COVID test, but, oh, it came up negative. Hey, there are a lot of times where the test is not always going to pick up on the virus. But the point we're trying to drive across here is, report says more than 200 symptoms tied to long COVID. And we have known this for a long time. And there are more and more reports and studies coming out confirming this. COVID can impact you in many ways. And a lot of its impacts may not show up until after you have tested negative. Then long COVID comes into play. You could have brain fog. You could have memory issues. Uh, senior citizens who are at early stages of Alzheimer's or dementia, that can get accelerated much faster with long COVID, you can have heart problems. You can have breathing difficulty. I myself started having breathing difficulty after a case of COVID. But mind you, I never tested positive for COVID back in 2020. This was very early in 2020. Before testing came to the United States, I had all the symptoms of COVID. Uh, there was just no testing at the time to confirm that I had COVID. And then several months later, all these new problems started occurring which is known as long COVID. Breathing difficulty was one of them. Finally, we advanced down the line. Well, I now have moderate asthma. I'm receiving treatment for it. I have my good days. I have my bad days. As of late, we will say more good days than bad days, but with the heat coming, those tend to be when the bad days hit. So the point I'm getting across is you can have a whole array of different That's just some of them. There are many more. There's over 200 different symptoms tied to long COVID, and it is really a problem. Let's read uh, this excerpt from this uh, article. 
And it says, long COVID can impact people across the lifespan from children to older adults, as well as across sex, gender, racial, ethnicity, and other demographic groups. It said, concluding that long COVID is associated with a wide range of new or worsening health conditions and encompasses more than 200 symptoms involving nearly every organ system. Yes, I got to remind you, if you've had a problem that started before, I hear this so often. Someone has a problem before COVID, and then they get a case of COVID, and now that problem's worse. They never want to link it getting worse to COVID. They're saying, oh, well, they had that problem long before COVID. You may have, but now that you had COVID, your problem just got a lot worse. And the biggest one I hear for that is with heart issues. People are saying, oh, well, I had heart issues before COVID. Oh, all of a sudden, I need to go uh, have a op major operation done because of my heart issues. Did you have COVID? Why, yes, but no, I had it before. No, it's not because you had it before. Yes, you had it before, but now COVID made that issue get worse. All right, moving on. We have a lot to get to, including very important wastewater data. Breaking Mexico reports world's first ever human case of H5N2 bird flu. The patient, a 59-year-old, died. Raise your hand if you can't keep up with how many different uh, H5s. There's H5N1, H1, and there's a lot of different ones. Matter of fact, there's so many different ones, I probably don't even know about all of them. H5N2, I don't know much about it, so I can't tell you much about it. And I will obviously be doing some research on this to see if I can learn more what the deal is with H5N2. All I can tell you is it's a type of bird flu, and now there's a human case where someone died, and it's the first ever human case. Uh, yikes, that's not... I uh, see... I told you, each and every day, there is something new popping up. There's a lot of viruses out there that are a threat to our health, and apparently that is one of them now. All right, national allergy map. There's a little bit of red popping up today. 38% of the country is in medium status. There's some red in portions of the Northeast. There's some red in South Dakota and some red in Oregon. Anywhere in the red or orange, please remember to take your allergy medicine. It is very important. Taking a look at what is going on with air qualities, you're going to see a wide mixture of things across the United States. In the east, we do have areas that are in the yellow, in the orange. Uh, we are in the orange here in southeast Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic region, and yeah, it's been starting to, I'm starting to notice it, while the majority of the orange is just to my west, it has been starting to spread eastward throughout the afternoon, so that's not good, as soon as I'm done here, air purifier is going right back on west coast, the normal hot spots in California, southern California is showing some red today, heat related illnesses, that map is starting to fill in a little bit more, and I expect that to continue, taking a look at what is going on with heat advisories today and excessive heat warnings, we have them up in Texas. We have them up in the southwest where heat indexes will get over 100 degrees. Want to learn more about climate? I do have an X page where I talk about that. I used to have a YouTube channel. Well, I still do. I haven't posted on it in so long. I would like to maybe get some schedule going with that again, maybe like once or twice a week. I don't know, something. It's a lot of work to run two channels. Keep up with all the comments that I get on Twitter. I, I mean, X. I mean, it, it, it's hard to keep up with everything. But uh, I do have another spot where I talk about climate. It's climate data reports. All right, getting back to health. 809 EMS calls yesterday in Philadelphia. And my early indication for today, I was going to play a clip for you. I opted not to. We don't have enough time for that. I was going to play you a clip of uh, EMS calls in Philadelphia from about, I guess it was about 12.30, 1 o'clock. We'll say 1 o'clock. There was just a string of like five or six calls in a row. And I did tweet this out. on. There were like about five calls in a row. It just constantly. And they couldn't spit them out fast enough. So today is obviously very busy. Uh, one, illness cases. They're starting to go back up to some parts of the city. do get a lot of overdose calls. And that's a problem as well. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania right now. And there's total of 14 EMS calls. We do see that there are various different calls, but let's see, is this still a thing in Chester? Yes, it is. Chester County, not good when it comes to illness. Not one, not two, not three, but four sick person calls right now. Oh, wow. This just updated. Uh, there's now a respiratory call added. So there's a lot of calls ongoing right now in Chester County. This is really busy for Chester County at this time of day. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen active calls right now, with several of them being sick people and respiratory difficulty. That's not good to see. It's a sign of the times. I think we're entering 
during the summer wave. But remember, I did show you that air quality map. Air qualities the further west you get of Philadelphia today are not great. All right, moving on now. Walgreens this week. National positivity trend is 22.9%. The prior week is 18.6%. That's a difference of up 4.3%. Testing did drop slightly, but... You know what? Cases are starting to rise in the United States. You may be seeing it on social media, X, Facebook. A lot of people are seeing this right now. Oh, we all tested positive for COVID. Our whole family, I saw one post earlier, family of four, all tested positive for COVID. People are calling out sick from work. People are saying that they're seeing people with illnesses. People are saying that they have COVID. I mean, it is happening fast. And I am not just seeing it just a couple here or there. I am seeing a ton of we are sick posts right now. Our family is sick. And you know what? It's starting to show up in the data. Here's Canada, first off. And Canada, the positivity rate for COVID, yeah, it's starting to rise now. It has doubled. It's now up to 7.8%. Canadian wastewater, 15 sites are showing an increase. 33 sites show no change. And 14 show a decrease still. Three sites are now at high. Three are in moderate. 17 are low. And 39 new sites. All right, moving on to the United States in wastewater. And let me set this up for the national level once again, and we can see here on the national level, you're starting to see some more high sites show up. We're going to take a look at a couple of them in just a moment. First, the national level. It's it's showing up here as high. Now, it may not necessarily be high just yet, but eh, may not take too long to get there. Take a look at this chart. New update from Wastewater Scan now shows on the national level. And this is because of what's going on in the West. And what's going on now? Yes, a big change. Remember the Midwest was dropping? Well, suddenly the Midwest is starting to rise. And take a look at this. It has now pushed the national level to rise once again. Now it's starting from a low level. But trust me, if it continues to rise this fast, we won't be low so long. The United States would go moderate and then probably quickly go to high. Let's take a look at a few of these sites. Again, look at this. It's, it's now going vertical in the United States. And we do know, or at least I do know, a couple times, you know, wastewater scan will update and it'll show something rising really fast, then it will correct a little bit lower. I'm really hopeful that happens. I pray this is a glitch, but again, with how many people all of a sudden are saying, oh, we're sick, we all test a positive. I don't know. We saw San Francisco, we saw Hawaii, now we're going to see Warren, Michigan, which is in, in the Detroit area. And take a look at this. Warren, Michigan. Yep, look at this chart. High. Rapidly, uh, starting to rapidly go up. It's only been one update, but again, it is starting to rapidly go up. They went down, for, they went up from May 6th. They had just 189 pathogens. Now they're up to 1,233. That's a pretty, pretty big increase, if you ask me. Uh, let's look at somewhere we looked at yesterday. The Northeast is not doing the big rise yet, but Dover, New Hampshire. Remember, I think we showed this yesterday. Take a look now. It updated again, and it's continuing to go straight up. 30,000 population at this wastewater site, and I should give you the population of the other wastewater site. My apologies. Let's go back to Warren, Michigan. Warren, Michigan, 140,000 population. So this is not a small site, and now it is starting to rapidly go up. Where else are we seeing oranges? We're seeing Carmel, Indiana. What's going on there? This is being listed as high. Uh, it's starting to go upward. It's at the beginning stages. Let's see. Anywhere else that we can show you? That is rapidly going up now. What is going on out here in Las Vegas? Let's check that out. And in Las Vegas, we can see here, yes, Las Vegas is going upward, but they're not doing the rapid rise that's happening in some of these cities. Let's go up to Salt Lake City. Or how about we go, yeah, Salt Lake City. Let's see what's going on there for COVID. Are they starting to do the rapid rise yet? No, they are not doing the rapid rise rise yet now let's take a look at the west coast region as a whole and you can see here over one update in the last update it is rapidly going up and you can see here in the midwest region when i pull that up it's the same thing happening there so hopefully uh maybe the data went up too fast hopefully this corrects lower but only time will tell we'll have to watch what happens but i think it's safe to say no matter what, the summer surge is clearly here in the United States. Uh, just to show you the south, here's what's happening there. Again, not doing the rapid rise. Uh, it is rising. It's starting to rise quicker. But again, not that straight upward movement that we're seeing. Now moving on, taking a look at the northeast region as a whole. And you can see northeast was rising. 
Now on the most recent update, it did drop somewhat. So again, sometimes a little bit unstable and erratical at wastewater scan. But again, the biggest thing to take away for today is I got to show this again because this is just crazy. Take a look at this. The national um, level is now starting to see a rapid rise. Only one update. We can hope it corrects lower. If we see it on two updates or three updates, then it gets really concerning. And a part of that problem, let's go over to the varying proportions. Uh, some people are saying maybe KP.3 is starting to pick up the pace. We won't get another update on that again until next week. We had a variant update last week. Right now, it's only at 12.7%, or at least on the most recent update. KP.2 does lead the charge at 28.5%. So I think it's safe to say the summer surge here in the United States is underway. Can't tell you much about New Jersey today. Only 35 out of 70 hospitals reported. With three people on a ventilator, we might as well read it all. 13 people in the ICU and discharges, 17 at this time. New York State, 606 new cases today. Their cases have been slowly increases. Not seeing the rapid rise in New York State just yet. Taking a look at what's going on with their hospitalization situation, just one higher today, 539. And the number of people in the ICU is two higher at 45. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update. But before I go, just a few key takeaway points. There are a lot of people in social media, X, Facebook, Instagram, uh, outside of the internet in real life stating that they are sick right now. There are a lot of events, you may want witness them on TV, where people are coughing more. Uh, there's a lot of people clearing their throats. Just today, just today, the FDA was holding a uh, conference on vaccines where maybe we'll find out what the deal is going to be with the winter vaccinations. I didn't mention this earlier because... Well, it's still ongoing right now, and eventually they are going to come to their decision. Maybe they will by the end of this day. And there were people there clearing their throat. Please, if you are not feeling well right now, take a COVID test. You may think, well, it's summertime. Can't get COVID. It's summertime. Guess what? You can get COVID. We have seen waves of COVID each and every summer since the pandemic started. Even in 2020, there was a small increase after the initial surge. And then, of course, 2021 came, 2022, 2023, 2024. It may be June. Maybe it's starting a little bit early this year. Please, if you're not feeling well, take a COVID test. If you don't have any tests, you have a cell phone, right? There are apps out there you can use to have a COVID test delivered to your door from the local drugstore. I have delivered COVID tests to people before. It's, it's just the way it is. You can get it delivered to you. So please, if you're feeling sick, take a test. If it comes up negative and you're still uncertain what it is a couple days later and you're still sick, take another test. You'd be surprised. With some of these variants, it's hard for the test to pick up on the cases. And please, mask up once again. If you stop masking because levels got so low, you need to mask up once again. People are getting sick left and right. And in healthcare settings, I'm hearing a lot of stories about that. I read a couple yesterday where people are going to appointments. A couple days later, they are getting sick. Please, mask in healthcare. Masking should have never been taken away from healthcare. Healthcare is where you go to feel better. Oftentimes, people who are sick need to use healthcare. All right, that's it for today. I will see you all again tomorrow. If you learned anything, Give this a thumbs up. You want to stay informed with what I'm talking about? Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share these videos with anyone you know. And leave a comment down below. Alrighty, I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone. And have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching.